Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Get on the Bus, Rev Up Your Reference Skills Program. This morning's program is on roving reference and will be presented by Era Anderson at the Campbell County Public Library. A few uh, quick announcements before we begin. Um, if you've not participated in one of our live webinars before, then you don't know that sometimes we have a few technical issues. So if something goes down here at the State Library or up in Campbell County, don't worry because ERA will give me the presentation later today and we will have it up in archive form on the website later this afternoon so you won't be missing anything. That also means if you need to, to step away or do something like that, don't worry because you can still watch the whole program. We are using both Yugma and our telephone today, so if you could put us on mute on your end, that would be fantastic. And if you do have hold music at your library, please don't put us on hold. If you finish the homework for today's program by March 16th, which is one week from today, you could win a $25 Amazon.com gift certificate or a boogie board LCD note-taking writing um, tablet, which are actually really fun to play with. I'll be drawing that again one week from today. If you finish all of the homework by April 15th for all of the programs, you could win a registration at the 2010 Wyoming Library Association Conference, an iPod Touch, and some other great prizes. If we have, we've had great success, like I said earlier, with participation, almost uh, 345 people have participated so far. If that number continues to rise, perhaps I'll throw in a really cool grand prize like a Kindle or a netbook or something fun like that. If you are a teacher and you would like to get PTSB credit for this course, go ahead and um, follow the instructions that are under the introduction on the Get on the Bus website, which happens to be getonthebuswyoming.wordpress.com. I still have not heard back from the PTSB, but I expect they'll get to me sometime. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many credits I can give you, but I'm sure we can give you something. If you're a library support staff person and you are interested in the American Library Association's Library Support Staff Certification Program, this reference Get on the Bus may uh, be used to satisfy some of the requirements for that program. So if you complete the whole program, you could probably use that to get your certification faster. We will be hosting a webinar on April 14th to talk about the Library Support Staff Certification Program. And of course, I will send out all the information on how to log in and participate that, on that. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn the show over to Era. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, you probably think that you're looking at a blurry slide in front of you right now, but that's not the case. That's Leia, and she's roving, 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 <laughs> looking for patrons. You know, before I get started with the, the meat of the program, I want to introduce to you the staff at Campbell County. I feel so blessed to work with these people. Um, this per person you see here is Jane, and it looks to me like she might be hiding, although she passes it off as roving. <clears throat> anyway, I am so proud to work with these women. Um, they're hardworking, high achievers, and, you know, I think that they have the most important thing in mind, and that is that people who enter the library have a good experience and that they leave with the most information that we can possibly give them. So this is Jane. This is Leia. You probably all know Leia. Um, and if you look behind, you'll see some of the things that we do in the tech center because we don't just rove in reference. You'll notice that there's the cash register, the fax machine, and if you look at the person on number four, you'll see that um, <clears throat> those are some of the maybe not benefits of working in the public sector. I think next time we're going to try to requisition chairs that go all the way down the back. And uh, Mary's really concentrating on not looking at the camera, but we'll see her later. And this is Candy. 
Um, Candy's at the tech center, <coughs> and she's working with someone to release a print job. You'll see a better picture of Candy later. And this is Mickey. Mickey has been an advocate of roving from the beginning. And right here, she's talking with a parent and a couple of children about the best of resources. All right. So from a practical standpoint at Campbell County Public Library, these are some of the things that we find work in roving. When you rove, you meet people at the point of their need, whether it's in the stacks, at the desk, or at the pack terminal. And we also find that this personal contact makes people feel welcome. It makes them feel like the library is a place to be and where they want to come back to. And it's part of that um, Walmart greeter concept. You know, we take so much for granted because this is our field. I think sometimes it's easy to lose sight of the fact that not everyone is comfortable, especially in the public sector when they walk in and try to find something. So another thing is that our client feedback has told us that people appreciate this approach. We've also found that roving eliminates the barrier of the desk. It puts you on an even base with those people seeking information. And it also ensures that we care about our clients' needs, and we care that their needs are met. Um, another thing, the staff is more aware of what's going on in the stacks. You can't know who's in the 600s desperate for medical information if you're always at the desk. So in general, this just helps us better understand the needs of the people who use our library. And the staff is also more aware of the materials. If there's a client looking for information on Lyme's disease, and our Lyme's disease books are really outdated, that's immediately brought to our attention because we just can't cover all bases without help. And here are other things that work. Roving gets the staff members moving. Now that might seem like pretty unimportant thing, but if you sit for two hours without getting up, it's not as beneficial for your mind or your body. And we found that being up and down, and we have a rule that if no one's approached the desk, you need to row anyway every 20 minutes. You need to get up, you need to walk around, you need to see what's happening. And it's often that when we're doing that, we find a lot of people just will not approach the desk and ask for help. But if we're in the stacks, they're more willing to share what their need is. Um, oh, this, and you know, these are things that the staff at Campbell County told me about what they appreciate about roving. And one person said, our perspectives and our brain cells get revived. Staring at the computer gets old. <laughs> so as rovers, we're better able to help when people are confused about genre or the Dewey section. And we found there are a lot of people who don't know their way around fiction either. And we find that we do quite a bit of reader's advisory while we're in that section. So um, it's really enlarged our duties. And we've also found that we can assist a larger number of people. Well, that, you know, goes without saying. And we've also found that it's beneficial for all of us to be out among the people and in the stacks. Now we've also <coughs> found quite a few reasons for concern. There's also always going to be that you know, sensitive subject matter that you need to be very careful about when you're in the stacks because someone right next to you could be listening. 
And if the desk is vacant for very long, people will wait at the desk. So we try to keep our eye on that. Um, another reason for concern is sometimes people will hide behind the desk. I don't know if that's true, but the desk is a barrier. And for people who are not as comfortable or maybe are more introverted, the desk can be a problem for roving because they tend to say, I want to be here at the desk. This is where I'm comfortable. And we also get, uh, a lot of times we, we have ready reference at the desk, and we're off in the stack. And also, people are accustomed to a stationary desk that they always go to for the point of service. Also, Mary pointed this out, that there's a very fine line between allowing people enough time to orient themselves and asking them if they need help. And it's easy to get engrossed in things while you're at the desk. And we do a lot of projects. And it's, you know, it's not good to be doing projects while you're on the desk because you can just get so engrossed that the world passes you by. So that's another problem. Now, you know, we have phones that are wireless. They were ordered a year ago, but the county tech people are so busy that we still do not have those. I'm looking forward to the way that we can, you know, unhinge ourselves from the desk simply because the only phone that we have access to is at the desk. And this is another problem. There are only enough staff to have one person on the reference desk. We remodeled in 2006 at Campbell County Public, and what happened was they split our services. We used to have one reference desk, and we ran uh, the internet service from that one desk. But when they remodeled, <clears throat> they divided our space. So staffing is a real issue. And it's also important to be visible to a patron in a central location. And we have a lot of patrons or users or clients, whatever you choose to call them, that have been coming here for years. And they've become accustomed to finding us at the desk. So when we're not there, it is a problem. And if you are interested in trying roving reference, these are some of the suggestions that I think you need to look at. You need to look at reshaped faces. All of us in this state have seen different population figures. This is what's happened in Campbell County in five short years. Our population, this is wrong, it should be 42,000, not 442,000. Woohoo! <laughs> so, um, you have to look at how your shape, your, your space has reshaped. Not only from outside the library, but from inside the library. Have you seen any changes, or are there changes that you could make? that would make this whole roving process work better for you. And one of the things that we have requisitioned for several times is that we need to have um, notebooks that are wireless that we can pack with us. The whole thing we need to concentrate on here is freeing ourselves from the desk because we kind of have one foot in each camp. But I'm not so sure that that will ever go away. Here's one way that we found to rove. <laughs> um, we can't always be there, but someone is always somewhere in the building, and most often we've gone over to the tech side because either we're changing stations or the tech side is so busy they've called us to help. Another thing that we do in the library is we do notarization. 
Now, not all of us are so fortunate as to have the patron robe to the desk, <laughs> but this is one where it was handy to have that person come to the desk. Leah is showing them. Um, but we could easily do that if we had notebooks, too. This is one of our dear patrons. Anyway, um, having those two desks has really been a problem. Another thing that we need to look at if we are really serious about our role is how much technology has changed what we do in reference services. This is a picture of Mary. Mary is helping someone at the PAC terminal, and rightfully so. That's where reference work should take place. You can't expect a patron to always come to the reference desk. And if you're there at the PAC terminal, what a learning opportunity. We have a rule of thumb that we never touch the keyboard, because if you're touching the keyboard, you're not helping that patron learn. So here's Mary, and notice her hands are not on the keyboard, but she is pointing out how to maneuver through a database. I just put this shot in so that you would have an idea of the spaces we're working in. And notice the sign hanging down that says reference. We're hopeful that we'll have a sign attached to that sign <laughs> that will say information. Because frequently, people don't associate the term reference with needing assistance finding information. So those are just a few things that we think might help us to do our job better. And here's a picture of Mickey again doing roving. These are some things that we put together that we feel would help us do a better job of roving. Simplify, adapt, educate those users, and delay what you're doing or eliminate, in some cases, what you're doing. This is one thing that we've done to simplify. We've created an in-house wiki for reference. That way, it doesn't matter what computer you're on, the information you need can be right in front of you. This happens to be part of what we call our gray box. <laughs> Years ago, we had a little gray file box. And in that little file box, we alphabetically listed everything that we thought was pertinent that we had frequent call for because we didn't have such a thing as bookmarks. And so we began to bookmark things. Well, it's fine if you're always on the same computer, but we're not. So we created this wiki so that we can find things readily wherever we're at. So that was one thing we did to simplify. Another thing we've done to simplify is create a staff homepage. And this staff homepage takes us directly to the resources that we're accustomed to using with people. And another thing signs can maybe do is to help educate the public. Um, it's not always a fun to go tell people that they need to be quiet. So sometimes just a sign and just the ability to point up at the sign is a way to help educate people about what you're trying to achieve. And we do have a lot of people that still use quiet area, and they're upset when it's not easy. There's another thing that we've done. We've tried to better label our stacks. You know, in, a, in an ideal world, it would be great to walk everyone to the correct stack and to help them find the book, but we don't have that kind of time. So what we've done is Try to put good signage up so that people can, and it's easy to say, if you walk down to the left, you'll see the stack that starts with 951. If you'll turn left, you'll find the book you're looking for. And if you don't find it, 
come back and I'll come and find it for you. So this is just a way for us to not only educate, but to maybe put off the inevitable. And here's another sign. We have a large print collection, and it's interfiled. So <clears throat> this is just a way for us to alert people or to educate people about where our holdings are. Now, this is Candy and Jane. This is not exactly what I had in mind when it came to roving. But you can tell they're having a great time. <laughs> they're adapting, I think. I think that's what they thought they were doing. Oh, now they're roving. Hang on, Candy. <laughs> and this goes back again to the part about educating people. Look at the number of people here who are going about their business. Vicki's looking on. No one's asking her for help, but we always need help somewhere. Here's another sign that has helped us. Um, for one year, we decided that we would subscribe to both electronic and paper in Morningstar and Value Line, but we wanted our public to know that they're not always going to have the paper. And so we put up this sign, and it's been very helpful. And some of the people that I thought would never, ever want to give up the paper are already using the online resources. So I think all you can do is plug away. So laying and eliminating. Are there things that you could possibly put off side to roll? Another thing you have to ask yourself is what are you willing to give up? Because we found that we've had to give up quite a bit. We used to do displays. Every two weeks we change our display and we'd have different books up and different we just can't keep up. The population just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, those are some of the things that we've had to eliminate. And some things just get delayed because you just don't have time. And it's not necessarily that you mean to delay them. You just can't keep up. When that happens, I think you need to relook at the situation and decide if those things that were delayed are important enough to keep. You know, I, I really pride our staff on the important things. I think they're in the right frame of mind because there isn't a day that goes by that we don't try to have fun. We try to enjoy the people that come into our library, and our goal is always to make sure that their visit was meaningful. And I think they really do a good job. This is Candy and Mary with one of our favorite patrons. She's not always our favorite patron, but we've learned if we give her chocolate and call her Buttercup, she's ours. So that concludes my uh, bid on roving reference. Do any of you have questions? I'll take your questions at this time. Eric, the one question we had by chat was, have you been able to increase your staff since your population has gone up? You know, Chad, I tried when uh, I tried two years ago, and I asked for 60 hours, and they gave me 12. So I have tried. Uh, right now, our county is at what they call hold the line budgeting, which means you can ask, but you're probably not going to get it. So we've sort of resigned ourselves, ourselves to knowing that we got to work with what we've got. And the county seems to be able to 
build new facilities. We're in that vein right now. And most agencies are very frustrated by the lack of help that all agencies in this county are hurting for additional employees. Hey, what else, Jamie? But that was it. Does anybody have any questions for ERA? Um, if, if you go to the uh, roving section and you go down to homework, you'll see that there are additional readings. Today was just sort of how we do it, but there are, uh, there are a lot of backup materials there that support what we're doing. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Eric, we did get a couple more questions via chat. Um, what would you like to have as far as hardware when you rove? And do you have any suggestions for a small library with only one staff person manning the reference area at a time? Okay. Um, additional things that we need when we rove are the notebooks, the wireless notebooks, the cordless phones, those things would help us immensely. Uh, we're not going to give up our reference desk because there are times when there's nobody in the stack. We need to have that desk as well. So those are additional things. I'd love to have more staff. Um, I'm not sure how to approach the commissioners. I've tried several different ways. But another thing that the county is absolutely desperate for is um, IT. Like I said, those phones have been here since last year. They just don't have enough help to come here and get them installed. So more money, more employees. All right. And what was the other one? Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for a small library who only has one staff person on the reference desk at any one time? You know, I think if you're a small library, you are probably already performing these services because you know your patrons. You know that when Mary Sue walks in, that she's want to, she wants the latest in a certain genre or she wants information on. And chances are you are already performing these services. They're the basic reference questions, but you're mobile. And if you're in a small library, are there times when you have a lot of patrons waiting? I guess that's my question to the person who asked it. A few, never, never a huge amount. How many do you usually have? It depends on the time of year. If it's summer, we're, we're slammed. And uh, if it's winter, one or two maybe is at the most. Have you tried signs that are maybe, I don't know that signs help, but if you're not going to get any more help, I think the thing you have to do is educate your users. And that's, that's a big hurdle. We have so many databases that people can't learn unless you are out there with them. You might try some one-on-one -on -one classes that, for instance, we would do one-on-one -on -one with people when we were slow, or you could maybe hold um, group classes and introduce the databases that way. We've tried that, too, and we have had success doing that. It's amazing how quickly people will adapt. We have people who come into the tech center, they sit down at the computer, they log in with their card, they print their materials, and they're gone. So there's always a learning curve. And I guess in your situation, I would try to get ahead of that curve. That's an excellent idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anything else? Well, I know that ERA is fully available to answer any of your questions. If they you know, hit you later today or next week, feel, feel free to give her a call or shoot her an email. Yeah, but, and let's blog, you guys. The more we exchange ideas, the better. Fantastic. Well, th 
Era, I'd like to thank you for your presentation this morning and remind everybody to join us again on Thursday when we learn about library guides.